We have now a very special session, which is going to be looking at the impact of cryptocurrency on the tourism industry. And we have two very special people we're going to invite to the stage, one who's taken quite a journey, and Excellence, thank you for being with us today. So it is my great pleasure to ask to this stage, Balut Baji, the president of World Tourism Forum Institute, who will be the moderator of our dear, dear special VVIP, His Excellence, His Excellence, Francois Hollande, the former president of France, sir. Thank you very much. Dear guests, thank you very much. So we are, I'm very honored to host Excellency Holland here. Uh, actually, this is not, not my first time that we are coming together with the Excellency. The first time we come together with the Excellency in Angola, in Luanda, the capital, in 2019, uh, before the COVID started. Uh, after the COVID came, and then uh, tourism is a bit stuck. But it's good. Now, today we are here, uh, and we are discussing tourism. We are discussing future of tourism. So. Uh, we, are, we are going to discuss with the Excellency because he approximately, uh, as, the, sorry, as the president in the France uh, and the Paris is the most visited destination in the world. It's on the rankings. Uh, if you compare to uh, Spain, if you compare to US, in, in many years it was at the number, number one at the rankings. So His Excellency is going to share with us uh, during his cabinet, during his uh, management, uh, is his observations, and then uh, we are going to discuss on that. Uh, Excellency, welcome to Dubai. Thank you very much. As, as president of such an important tourism destination, such as France, His Excellency, why do you think the vertical of the job creation investment, infrastructure, all this combined is so important for the economy of the country. So can you, can you emphasize on that? Monsieur le Président, Mesdames, Messieurs. Uh, Mr. The President, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased uh, to be with you at this forum, uh, uh, which uh, and it, uh, mentions not only the importance of tourism in the world, but also its uh, uh, capacity to move uh, to a further step uh, with the blockchain. Uh, you said earlier that uh, France is the first uh, destination uh, in the world, uh, um, almost uh, 90 90 million uh, visitors uh, before the pandemic, uh, 90 million visitors, uh, and almost 10% uh, uh, of uh, uh, GDP, uh, which we get from tourism. There is also two million uh, jobs uh, in France uh, uh, in tourism sector, and uh, we are proud uh, to be uh, the mostly visited country in the world. But uh, we don't have the first avenue in the world uh, in terms of tourism because uh, there are some stays that are very short. Uh, for example, uh, one visitor out of five in France uh, uh, would uh, stay one night only. So uh, the, the challenge uh, for uh, tourism uh, is to be able not only to attract many visitors, but also to make uh, sure that such visitors, such tourists, uh, can uh, spend uh, uh, as long time as possible and uh, uh, can spend also uh, in our country. So uh, the challenge uh, is, uh, is connected to your form uh, is uh, to uh, give more value uh, to, the stay, to the stay of the tourists in our country. So. It's not only a visit uh, that uh, will last uh, uh, for a few hours and visiting uh, some monuments, uh, but uh, there should be uh, the maximum of impact uh, for the target country. So this is why we 
cannot uh, be uh, proud of being the first destination of tourism uh, in the world, but we need to be uh, the country that uh, makes the highest revenue from tourism in the world. due to the pandemic. And now the current political situation in Europe is not helping. What is your take that why as mankind or as people we need tourism as a catalyst of peace or and not war? What is your feedback? Actually, uh, the sector of tourism has been affected by the pandemic, and for almost two years, uh, visitors uh, were uh, confined, uh, and there was a loss of revenue for countries that were the most uh, visited, and then came the war in Ukraine, uh, which will also affect tourism sector, because uh, uh, there will be risks uh, and uh, also some uh, expectation of risks and less travel. And this is why a blockchain can be one of the answers to that. We need uh, to facilitate uh, transportation, uh, even uh, for uh, uh, sanit uh, health uh, precaution, and even uh, simplification and transparency and use of all the procedures that allow us to offer guarantees to destination countries uh, so that the person are vaccinated. Uh, all of this uh, will be a security for the traveler and uh, also for the country that he visits. The war in UK, uh, uh, we will know soon probably uh, the outcome uh, and uh, its population is the mostly affected, uh, but uh, maybe in the aftermath of this uh, war, uh, which uh, led uh, to fear uh, worldwide, uh, we have, uh, uh, we, as you said, uh, tourism is a factor of peace uh, because it allows us to share experiences, uh, culture, understanding of the world, uh, to have some sort of dialogue between civilizations. And necessarily, uh, it's a tool uh, to uh, uh, to make uh, harmony and peace prevail. Uh, tourism is also a factor that uh, will allow growth uh, in the emerging countries uh, and therefore uh, avoid uh, phenomena linked to uh, poverty or radicalization. His Excellency President, obviously it's important that revenue stays within the industry. But how can a government ensure it is spread evenly around the different businesses. How do governments ensure that for the private sector? The challenge uh, for tourism is not only to serve uh, the companies that are linked to the activities uh, of uh, uh, hospitality and the services that uh, the traveler is expecting, such as transportation, hotels, uh, and visits. What we need to do is uh, to build uh, a sector that uh, uh, has uh, affect uh, to, to other uh, uh, sectors, such as uh, trade, uh, uh, handicrafts, uh, and uh, products that uh, can be uh, uh, marketed. And here, a blockchain uh, can be a factor of coordination of all these activities uh, and uh, uh, to put them in the same application, not only for travel, not only hotels or restaurants, but all what the country can offer. I can give some example. Uh, France, uh, the mostly visited country, uh, and uh, has uh, the highest number of uh, touristic uh, monuments uh, because we have 36 uh, sites that are uh, UNESCO uh, uh, recognized. Uh, so uh, to be touristic country, you need to have monuments and sites. No, the, the challenge actually of what we need uh, in, in terms of investments in tourist, tourism is that uh, around these sites, 
we need to have all a, uh, a set of services for the visit. Uh, the visit uh, comes to see Eiffel Tower, but he he will visit uh, most of France. He will come to visit uh, Notre Dame, uh, but and uh, he will be able to uh, go all over France. Uh, to uh, to see the products that are suggested to him so we can have here shared between different companies the potential for jobs if we go deeply his excellency the potential for jobs and employment stretch beyond hotels to the whole tourism supply chain to excursion providers craft makers converse uh, formers and many more all part of the tourism product you agree that tourism is an economic multiplier for other sectors. If we go the previous conversation deeply, such as healthcare, transportation, manufacturing, food and agriculture, and so on. So what is your, what is your idea on that? So tourism is triggering the other uh, sectors and supplying them. So it's creating also the, 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 the different economic models. So what is your comments on that? Yes, uh, and developed economy like the one of France uh, can also uh, be uh, uh, compartmentalized uh, with companies uh, working in tourism and uh, others uh, working uh, in other activities in other sectors. The challenge is to make sure that uh, tourism links uh, more uh, segments of industry and productive industry than it is today. So we need to make sure that uh, every person who comes to visit a country uh, can be seen as a change chance for that country, not only because he is going to spend his money on site, but because uh, uh, tomorrow he will be a consumer of products that will come from that country he visited. So we can make sure that every tourist who comes, uh, even after he leaves the country, he will be a consumer of that country he visited, or uh, an investor in of that country he visited. So we need to take into consideration uh, each uh, tourist, uh, and this is uh, the challenge uh, with the new technologies, uh, to make sure that uh, each person is considered not only a visitor, uh, but also a customer, uh, a permanent uh, a customer of that country. Also. On the different perspective, on the economic perspective, I'm going to ask how essential it is to drive tourism for foreign direct investment. The pandemic made a lot of countries to focus inward. For instance, domestic tourists may be visiting friends and family, going out for meals together, traveling by car, and staying with friends, or in low category than five star. How does that help? It means that we saw in the pandemic all the flights are cut, all the borders are closed, then the, the people just only stay themselves with their families. So do you think that this will cover the economy in the near future or the, all these things have to be settled up back? Yes, uh, the pandemic uh, has changed our habits uh, and our uh, methods uh, of travel uh, because it forced us uh, to stay where we are and uh, to visit our uh, country more and more. So uh, uh, local tourism uh, has been triggered by the pandemic. And as you said, uh, uh, many of our uh, uh, usual customers, uh, they started visiting in the families, uh, they went uh, to places of the country that they did not know before. And national tourism uh, has uh, evolved a lot. Uh, 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 instead of uh, seeing people traveling overseas, uh, is it uh, 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 handicap? Is it uh, helping or not? Uh, is it going to disturb international tourism? I think there is always a need uh, to travel, and this need uh, will not uh, disappear because of the pandemic. 
I think that uh, as uh, we are getting out of this uh, health uh, crisis, uh, there will be a, a very big growth of uh, tourism uh, internationally, but there are also some uh, uh, behavior that uh, uh, favor uh, local tourism. There are some uh, investment uh, during the pandemic. They will also serve international tourism. We found out uh, in France uh, that uh, they have landscape that uh, we did not uh, uh, value before, some sites we did not know before, and now we'll put them in the market. So national market uh, does not go against international tourism, but uh, it's the basis from which we can suggest new products. The other question, for some countries, uh, I can observe because the last time I visit, the last two years, I visit more than 25 countries and then all handshake with the presidents. So some of them has a huge tourism network, but they don't realize that the money is coming through network and the currency. Because there is a huge lack of data. So today we spoke the digitalization, we spoke the blockchain, but still some countries are coming very back uh, behind us. So how important is the innovation and technology in this content? So in Europe, you are dating a lot of data. In France, you are, you are, you are working through the data. So what is the importance of this for, uh, as your presidency, what you did, what you observed, sir? Uh, this is a very important question. We know, thanks to the statistics, uh, the number of uh, tourists uh, comes, uh, come to our country. Uh, we know uh, how much time uh, uh, tourists stay in our country. We know uh, approximately where they go. We know how much money they spend. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, statistics uh, will not allow us to know more, even those uh, uh, produced by the government. So the data will give us uh, uh, more accurate uh, uh, knowledge, uh, more powerful, and as a consequence, uh, what we have now uh, are statistics, and thanks to, to uh, blockchain, uh, and uh, to cryptocurrency, we will be able to know not only uh, how much the tourist has spent, uh, but we will also know what, how much he spent exactly, in which restaurant uh, uh, he had uh, dinner, what did he eat uh, as a meal, uh, in, uh, in which hotel did he stay first, uh, did he earn a house, uh, did he buy uh, some products, uh, did he uh, do any shopping, uh, did he take any uh, public transport means. Uh, all this data will uh, allow uh, the sector of tourism and the operators of tourism to uh, suggest new products uh, and uh, the state, the government, uh, will be able to make the investment that investors are looking for in, in terms of transportation uh, facilities and procedures and uh, hospitality at uh, airports. So uh, the data uh, is not only uh, to, uh, to monitor what the tourists are doing, but uh, the data is uh, like uh, uh, the necessary items uh, for us, uh, for the investment, and also for the private sector that will have uh, very accurate uh, data on the consumers, and also for the public sector, which will be able uh, to build infrastructures and offer services and modify services uh, in order to develop uh, tourism in the country. So the data for us. It's the condition for a new uh, policy of tourism, and the countries that have the most data will be the one that will offer the best services to the people. Excellency. So actually, before our presentation, the CCO of the Arriva made a presentation and explained how the system is working, how secure, and how the system is evaluating, because when we came at back, uh, our parents use the money, and then the credit cards start. After then, maybe the next generation will 
directly will be dominated through the cryptocurrency. So what is your take on the rising digital economy, digital currencies, and this new model, the, the new mode of transactions through the crypto wallets blockchain? UIA is one of the few countries who is supporting and passed law to regulate this industry. Do you think that other governments will follow or it, its trend then will fade away with this time? And also, uh, we saw on the presentation, the Ariwa, the new model, new technology, what is your comments? So these projects will trigger the tourism industry more, or what is your vision on that, sir? Uh, I was uh, very fascinated by the presentation uh, uh, because it opens a new horizons. Uh, and uh, in tourism, we need new horizons, uh, even for the sky. Uh, we need to imagine uh, wha how will the travel of the future will look like and the conditions for it. So uh, crypto currency, uh, they, uh, they can uh, uh, spark fear because we can think uh, what's this kind of uh, payment, uh, is it safe? But it also make us uh, hope uh, that uh, exchange uh, will be easier uh, with low fees, uh, with uh, less and less uh, intermediaries, uh, and, and with the capacity, uh, thanks to this facility, uh, uh, to travel uh, with uh, very simple procedures and uh, without uh, the restrictions of payment, uh, we can get rid of uh, all the uh, complexities uh, of uh, exchange. So we need uh, definitely uh, adapt uh, new, uh, us uh, as uh, the public sector, but also you, the private sector, we need to adapt to this uh, evolution of cryptocurrency. The condition is security. Once uh, cryptocurrency uh, is, uh, is more uh, secure than anything else, uh, it will allow uh, us to prepare uh, and uh, to conduct all the transactions when we are in a country that we visit. I think uh, this system uh, will uh, evolve uh, worldwide. And the country is the, that will be the most competitive, uh, the one that will allow the use of cryptocurrency. If uh, the, the country allows all the operators uh, to be integrated in the platform at this moment uh, for the consumer, it's a significant advantage because he can use cryptocurrency for all the operations. Of course, for transportation, uh, for his stay, uh, for the restaurants, but also uh, for shopping and services. And uh, thanks to this. Uh, uh, this platform, uh, he can uh, access all the operations. Uh, do we need uh, some uh, regulations? Uh, every time there is uh, some new emerging activities, we need some regulations, uh, which should not be uh, a handicap, uh, but uh, it should contribute uh, to ensure uh, that uh, uh, this uh, money can uh, develop uh, in a way that the consumer will have no doubt uh, that uh, he can use this money safely. So uh, the, this uh, should be a network like you showed in the presentation uh, of the crypto money, cryptocurrency. Excellency. So the most, one of the most important thing is the security, as you mentioned. Uh, and we, we spoke about the security on the blockchain, but how about it? Because the world is changing on the other side. Uh, for example, the food security. Now, if we turn back from the digital to real life, so the food security or the, the water security, so all these things, again, the global warming, so all these things will affect the tourism business. So what is your perspective on that? Oui, souvent, uh... oh. 
Yes, uh, most heads of states that I meet, uh, they uh, when they want to emerge as touristic countries, uh, they ask what they can do uh, to attract uh, the highest number of visitors, and I always tell them the same thing. It's uh, security uh, that's uh, uh, the, the condition to have uh, the best uh, tourism uh, policy. Security, uh, of course, uh, it's security uh, for people and properties uh, to ensure that uh, they can move without uh, having fear uh, for themselves, for their families, but also uh, food security uh, to be sure that uh, uh, we can uh, consume uh, products uh, that are uh, 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 that uh, will not uh, uh, disrupt uh, our stay. Uh, it's also uh, security, uh, the health uh, security, to to make sure that uh, you can be taken care of in case something happens to you. It's also uh, uh, digital uh, security uh, to be sure that uh, those machines uh, you can use them uh, uh, safely uh, and that you can make the transaction with all the necessary warranties. So everything that contributes to security contributes to development of tourism. I can add the security of transportation, uh, not only uh, transportation that you will use to go where you want, but uh, within the timeline uh, and the comfort conditions. The, the the main thing for a tourism policy is to have landscape, monuments, uh, and uh, wonderful sites and uh, capacities for comfort, uh, but uh, also security. I can give an example that uh, uh, that is relevant to my country. Uh, there was uh, at a certain time uh, some. Uh, risks uh, for visitors coming from China who had uh, uh, lots uh, of cash. Uh, they didn't have uh, cryptocurrency, and uh, uh, they were robbed uh, when uh, they arrived uh, to airports. So my uh, government uh, put uh, in place uh, some uh, uh, control and uh, uh, alert uh, policies and this type uh, of uh, uh, theft uh, disappeared. Uh, and this is important uh, and it allows uh, tourists uh, to be sure that France is a safe country. So when you are a safe country, it's for uh, physical uh, security, but also uh, food security, health security, and uh, technological security uh, to be sure that uh, all the digital machines works well. Actually, in the post-COVID era, as our generation is started to face uh, some countries' problem, like the Ukraine. So, as the pers perspective of the EU, as the perspective of the uh, your uh, vision, one of the most important thing is the stability on tourism industry. So, one country have to respect the sovereignty of the other country. So what is your comments on this, especially on the perspective of the Ukraine? Because the topic is the hot, maybe you want to contribute something on that. Yes, uh, we are now uh, living this uh, uh, this conflict because Ukraine uh, is in Europe uh, and this war uh, that's not only uh, destroying uh, 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 people's life and uh, innocent people are killed, but it's also uh, leading uh, to fear and uh, making uh, a movement very complicated. I would uh, like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, the member of the European Parliament uh, because they are trying to end uh, this conflict, and this conflict has effect uh, on tourism because when there is an international conflict uh, of uh, such magnitude, uh, consumers uh, uh, remain at home and uh, don't travel. Uh, uh, war is, uh, is always uh, uh, stopping everything about exchange, uh, even uh, when uh, it can be relatively uh, safe. So 
we have now the responsibility uh, to deploy all the efforts uh, to end uh, this conflict uh, and uh, to avoid uh, that uh, it, spread, it spreads over to other countries or Asians. Uh, I know that uh, uh, everyone is concerned now. Uh, Turkey is concerned. Uh, uh, Poland is uh, concerned. The rest of Europe uh, and the Balkan countries are concerned. And there was uh, lots of tourists uh, from uh, Russia and Ukraine that were traveling. Uh, but now they can no longer do it. And uh, for all the reasons we can imagine, uh, uh, whether it's for peace or uh, the end of uh, this tragedy uh, for uh, evolution uh, of tourism, we need this uh, war to end. Excellency, uh, last uh, two questions. March is the most, uh, March is the month that celebrates the International Women's Day, which got started in a European country, Netherlands, some hundred years ago. Women in leadership and all walks of life have come a long way, but still a lot needs to be done. As male counterparts, how can we do more to support our other holes more? Yes, uh, you are right to talk about the role of women in all organizations. I have seen here, uh, seen them taking the floor, and uh, they were uh, very determined uh, even to uh, shape uh, the future and uh, they help us understand the evolution of blockchain and uh, digital life. Uh, women, they play a role uh, in tourism uh, industry. There are lots, lots of women uh, in, uh, in service sectors, uh, in uh, hospitality uh, and, uh, and food and uh, uh, sites uh, visiting. So for many countries that want to develop uh, work of women, tourism uh, is an activity that contributes uh, to make sure that women can play an important role uh, in our relevant countries. I can add one more thing. Uh, when uh, you decide to travel uh, somewhere in the world, uh, about uh, to book a hotel, uh, it's uh, mostly women who take the decision. It's uh, it's the woman uh, who convinced us, uh, who convinced the whole family to go to such destination. If I am operator of tourism, uh, I will look uh, first at uh, women uh, and their uh, taste uh, to develop my own activities. As past head of a top tourism destination state, what is your advice to any leaders who is following us? Who is keen to develop tourism as their economic engine? What is the one most important action they can take to support this idea? The most and the first action that they have to start. The most important thing they need to do uh, is uh, to train uh, uh, the people, uh, especially uh, those uh, who will be uh, working at tourism uh, sector in our countries. Uh, uh, in, in France, we had lots of landscape, monuments, uh, beautiful places. But uh, in every country, there is something uh, somewhere you can go, you can visit. Uh, uh, I traveled uh, a lot in the world, but uh, I can tell you that there is no country without uh, landscape, monuments, or sites, or some surprises that they can offer us. So, so it's not a contest between countries about landscapes or hotels. Or, uh, what will be considered in, in a travel, in a stay, uh, is the quality of the service. So uh, the training, the professional training uh, of uh, the tourism staff is uh, the necessary condition for a country to have a successful policy of uh, tourism. 
the training of the staff. Uh, it's important uh, to meet uh, the needs uh, in hotels, in restaurants, uh, and uh, the sites of visits, uh, and uh, transportation, uh, and the quality in general of hospitality. But uh, it's also a necessary uh, uh, condition uh, for uh, building uh, touristic condition. In France, for example, we have 200,000 companies working in tourism. So it's uh, important to train uh, people uh, to be uh, uh, leaders in tourism. Uh, the second thing uh, about tourism, uh, and that was uh, explicit enough, and it's uh, the objective of your conference, is if we need to develop uh, blockchain, if we need uh, uh, to have uh, uh, digitalization in tourism sector, if uh, a digital sector will have such importance, we need uh, staff uh, who are capable of using this technology. Uh, this is why I think that uh, tourism schools, uh, universities of tourism, and uh, university uh, uh, departments uh, of tourism, uh, they uh, should uh, focus uh, on tourism. Uh, training uh, is uh, the first condition uh, uh, for a successful policy of tourism. The final question. As a sum, if we combine all these things that we discussed and you explain and you give the feedback to us, as the, as the president, what do you propose for the government specifically if we pass back the, the basic models on the technology, on the cryptocurrency, on the blockchain? What is your advice, especially on the tourism sector, Excellency? Because tourism is the mobility sector. For the mobility, you have to be fast. So what is your advice on that for the governments that they have to take the consideration on that? Thank you. If, uh, if we want uh, uh, to fight against nationalism uh, and, and if, if we want to make sure that the world uh, is shared uh, with everyone, if uh, we want to fight uh, 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 global warming, which is a challenge for us. We need to be all uh, able of achieving mobility so we can visit the world. Uh, after the pandemic, uh, we asked ourselves the question uh, that uh, transportation, given the prices of energy uh, and uh, how scarce uh, it has become in, and if it will be able to offer us possibility of travel, the answer is yes. We need to be able to move uh, and travel, uh, but it will cost us uh, higher. So uh, tourism. Uh, because uh, need uh, transportation will be more expensive. So we need to make sure in our countries, and this is the responsibility of head of states and the government, they need uh, to develop all the condition uh, to facilitate mobility, facilitate uh, travel. Uh, and uh, we need to be uh, very strict uh, about security uh, and also about uh, health precautions. Uh, and uh, of uh, guarantees for exchange. And this is where a blockchain can uh, give us uh, some elements that will allow us uh, to lower the fees and give more security and uh, to favor movement and travel. This just for peace. So tourism is not uh, just uh, a sector uh, that uh, will uh, have uh, revenue for operators and the private sector which is necessary but it's a political challenge it's a uh, it's a way of understanding the world uh, and uh, ensuring uh, a better understanding uh, of uh, uh, people living in this world uh, which we have together uh, uh, as this is why I was happy uh, to participate uh, in your forum, uh, not only to develop uh, an activity that I always supported uh, as a president, which is tourism, uh, because tourism is a means of achieving happiness uh, to consumers and uh, also to share what we have together on this planet. So 
we are over on our time. Uh, thank you very much with your participation. Uh, so we have a valuable guest so who get informed about your experiences. And then we have the uh, community who is following us online, uh, approximately 10,000 uh, community members. Thank you very much, Excellency. Next time, uh, we hope to see you again in the near future projects. Thank you very much. So if you want to contribute, the floor is yours. Merci à vous et... Uh, uh, thank you very much and I wish you success uh, for this meeting uh, and thank you for having invited me because uh, I know now uh, a lot more about cryptocurrency and blockchain and I will make sure uh, uh, to uh, make it uh, evolve in my country but to use it myself.